everyone, it is Caitlin, and today we are making a watercolor box um, so that when I'm at Living History events, I have something to do. Alright, so here's the box we're working with. It's just a little pine box, and it opens up. There's no closure or anything on it yet, and we're going to add one. What I thought we would do real quick is stain it, because it needs to be stained. I was going to stain it after I made the little tray for the inside, but um, I tried cutting the wood with a knife after knife, and that didn't quite work. So I'm going to go over to our parents' house and have my dad help me with this all, um, probably in a couple days. So we're going to go ahead and do this now, and I just have some... I have some stain that I found at, I think, Walmart that was in my garage, so I'm going to assume that's where I got it from. And I guess we're going to go I just have a little towel here, dip it in there, and we're just going to stain it. Yeah, I had a really dark stain in the garage too, but I'm looking at the originals and they seem to be not like a super dark wood. So, I guess this would be the best bet of the stuff that I had. And whenever I get the tray done, then I guess I'll stain that too in the same way. So this is like basically the size of the tray, except for that it's going to be about half an inch bigger on either side because those are going to be where my walls are. This is just the bottom part of it. Um, and they'll fit in here. And so I have a spot, actually it's upside down, because this is the way it's going to go. So a spot for like pens, um, or so a spot for my pen and pencils and charcoal pencils and that sort of thing. And then this is going to have a ceramic little palette, basically like a mixing tray thing. It goes in here and either side is going to be a spot for some glass water jars um, for the watercolors. And this is where all the paints are going to go on top. So I'll have space for 12 different colors of paint, um, which we're going to make. That's going to be the top of the tray, and everything else is going to go in the bottom. So like, eventually I'd like to find a ceramic uh, round palette, and my erasers are probably going to go down there, and the little boxes of charcoal, and something else I needed a box for. Um, anyway, all that's going to be probably underneath here, and then this will just be on top with the actual paints. The brushes, oh yeah, the brushes are probably going to go in this part too. That's important. Um, brushes are very important. So like all the stuff I'll need all the time is going to be up here and stuff I might use occasionally will be down in the box and I can pull it up whenever I need to. Um, ideally, of course, it would be like the originals where there would have been a drawer coming out, but um, turns out nobody makes those. Like I can find like the really tall ones with drawers, but nothing this size that is the size of the originals has a drawer so um, yeah I'm kind of improvising on this part but um, you do see trays in other boxes like the sewing boxes so I don't feel it's totally out of the realm of possibility but it's it would have been better to have a drawer this one shouldn't be as much trouble to put together as the sewing box because there is no silk to um, glue in it's just staining it, finishing it, and then assembling all the bits and pieces. So I think there's going to be more work assembling the bits and pieces in this one than there was with the sewing box. I'm excited to see it come together and to learn the art of painting and drawing. So um, I actually can't paint or draw. I am taking classes now, or I signed up for some virtual classes. Anyway. Um, Simply because I, it's been gnawing on me for a while that Sarah and Nettie would have been extremely well-educated women back in the day. I mean, Sarah went to boarding school, um, and then she went to a fin um, in Nashville, and then a finishing school for two years in New York City. And Nettie went to in Mobile, Alabama. Um, so they were very highly educated. When you look at education of women back in the time period, it's most likely they spoke several different languages. They would have extensively studied art, painting, drawing, um, the fine arts, the sewing, and that sort of thing. And I got the sewing down pr 
pretty well. I know my wardrobe could use some work, but um, the basic skills I have, and I can always, and there are some mediums that I, with sewing I work better in, and I can always fake it and pull the ones I'm really good at for events, so it makes it look like I'm really good at what I'm doing. But um, yeah, I'm. I would like to branch out my skills and actually, since I'm pretending to be a very well-educated 19th century lady, I need to actually have some of the skills that a 19th century lady um, of their stature and standing would have had. So yes, I am taking art classes right now, which is kind of where this project kind of came into fruition because I decided that if I'm going to take art classes, I needed a really nice thing to put my art supplies in. And then I started researching and found all these cool boxes. And so yeah, that's where this idea came from. All right, so I have moved us into the living room so I can sit on the couch while I do this. So I have the tray made now. There's what it looks like. Stained it and everything. Um, the little paint tray thing, I was going to have it sit up higher so I feel like I should reach it. So I was gonna put something underneath to kind of raise it up. Um, it is now stuck in there. Uh, it is just exactly the size of of this and I was using it to I measure the spot since I had this here y'all can't see that I had this in here for a water bowl another water bowl over here so yeah um, I just barely fit this in there um, and so yeah now I can't get it out so it's just gonna stay down there I don't foresee any real issues with it it'll be fine um, I'm going to figure out something because I think having the paints this far down is going to be an issue. So I might have to find something to kind of just raise them up a little bit. I think the original had something on the floor of the tray and then these parts were shorter, but I didn't think about that um, at first. So yeah, we are where we are. I'm going to go ahead and seal the wood since I have it stained and the stain has dried. Oh yeah, and then in the tray we also put and these little half inch things so the tray can sit on top. Um, and then also put some pieces of wood here so that I can actually hang the lock on and that sort of thing. So it went here and there's one over on the top as well. My dad was super kind and spent his Sunday afternoon helping me with making wood products. Actually, before I get too far into this, I might want to drill the hole for the lock. And let's add the little plate cover right over here. I'm going to make sure I can actually still unlock it. Oh, it needs to be right here. name on it. We're going to put it right in the center here. So now we have a really pretty name plate with Sarah's name on it. Alright, so I think while we're waiting for stuff to get here with paints, we can go ahead and start making this, um, I've been calling it a portfolio. I guess that's the proper term for it. It was just something to put the papers in that I've painted and that sort of thing. So I have a piece of book board. It's this book board. And that's going to be the basis of it. And then the front cover is going to be leather. So that's what you see behind it. The half hide of cow leather. And then um, that's going to be the outside of it. And the inside I have some pretty marble paper that we put on the inside. So I purchased some PVA. This is archival um, book binding glue. And I chose this specifically um, because the leather marble paper and book board are all book binding things and so I figured this is going to be my best bet. The glue quite ready. I'm going to brush down smoothly. You need a little bit more but I just want to make sure it's covered completely. You see these a lot in fashion plates and even some in portraiture. But I haven't come across an original, and I don't, 
I can't find a description of one, how to make it. So we're kind of going off just pictures right now. Maybe eventually I can find a little bit more information and then we'll, we can maybe do this again or maybe um, we deemed acceptable. Um, it seems as though the tops of them are always a solid color. And I can't tell if it's a paper based or if it's more of a, or if it's leather. I chose leather and did paper on the inside. Of course my paper is marble paper, so this is kind of what I'm assuming they would be like. You see them in all shapes and sizes. You see really giant ones for like piano music, even up to the 1860s. But it seems as though um, you can have them at any size. So there's ones that are just like half this size, I would say, like cut it down the middle. I've seen, just looking at proportions, that's what it kind of looks like. I've seen ones that are bigger than this. I just figured this to be a really good size. And then I need some heavy books to sit on top of this to make it not, because it's already trying to bow out a little bit on me. carry papers around in, like their finished work or um, incomplete pieces, and it looks like they also use the top part as kind of just a easel of some sort to actually, to actually work on. And I figured, and that's one of the reasons I chose leather, and that's one of the reasons that I chose leather is that I knew leather it has some give to it, so it's good to like draw on, but also if I got paint on it, it wouldn't, um, it'd easily wipe off, basically. This is the marble paper that I have. We'll just start in one corner and work our way down. And we're gonna have paper because it's so forgiving like there's a few wrinkles up in here but you can't see them at all because the paper is just so busy I think overall it's really good really nice. Um, we're going to drill some holes into it um, to put the ribbon through so that actually so that my papers do not fall out while um, I'm transporting them. So I already marked I went five inches in on either side and two inches down. I think two inches sounds a little much. I think next time if I were to do this again I'd do just an inch down but the paper still fits like this so we're gonna leave it. Um, I think it was closer with one and a half to two inches. On this side, I did do one and a half, um, and then just halfway. So it looks like on the images I'm seeing, I'm seeing um, two ties on the top and one on the side, and this is just to keep the papers from falling out, I would assume. I'm going to take my drill. I'm going to make the mark. <laughs> it actually is easier to drill through the leather than I thought it was going to be. Close that. 
and I just have some plain brown silk ribbon and I'm cutting them at 25 inch lengths. Which should be more than enough. I've been experimenting with the paints, which is why I have blue fingers. Oh, and I used a quarter inch drill bit to drill these holes. I don't think I mentioned that before. Perhaps could have been just a teensy bit wider. And I had bigger drill bits so I want to redo them. Yeah, I think 25 inches was a good length. That's enough to tie and leave a little bow. And, moment of truth, no paper falling out. It's a leather, but from where I drilled, but yay, it's going to stay. Okay, so I think that project is done. It's really cute. Um, it's a bit bulky to carry around. Um, but I think that's just the size, and it's a good size though, so it's going to fit, you know, like sketch paper on one side and watercolors on the other, or, you know, extra paper and then the ones I've already completed, you, or, you know, like extra paper and then completed pieces or something like that. It has space for two of them. It's going to be a really nice, um, like little lap desk to actually do paintings on. The leather's going to be easily washed, whether it was paper or fabric, it may stain or, um, you know, if it was paper, you wouldn't want to wipe it down or anything so it gets soggy. But I think the leather is a good option for this. It looks like the originals do, um, at least as far as you can tell from an oil painting or a fashion plate. Uh, so I think this turned out really well. I'm going to continue working on the paints. And as soon as we get those done, we're ready to assemble the box. And then I can start practicing. Um, and hopefully I'll get you know, at least decently good by the time we start having events again. Nice thing about quarantine is I'll have time to actually practice. Um, so yeah, excited about that. But it turned out really cute. Hello and welcome to the kitchen. We are going to work on some watercolors today. So this was actually, or these, or actually my second attempt at watercolors and they turned out a lot better than the first. So we're going to keep doing basically what that what I did. I'm changing a few things here and there to make our final watercolors. So I have this lovely silicone mold which is where I uh, mixed up my watercolors and let them dry. And um, for my modern watercolors, which is what this is going to be, um, it's going to serve as a little palette that's just going to keep my stuff. So I have a second one over here that we're going to be building today. So I did number them and that kind of helped me with this. This is what the colors looks like. Um, some of them show up better than others. Uh, and so there's a few things we're going to change. And I put a check mark by the ones I think we're going to reproduce today. And we're going to do a couple others as well. The spaces for the watercolor that are in the box um, are about half the size. So I'd have to cut one in half. I wasn't sure, still not entirely sure, if I want to go ahead and like put like a piece of cardboard or something to stop it up. Um, and Or make a whole one and just cut them in half when they're done. I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm probably going to do a whole one and then just cut it. I think it's going to be the easiest way to do this. But yeah, let's go ahead and get mixing. I have my computer with all of my quantities and my measurements. And we're going to reproduce some of these. So these are some of my pigments over here in the corner. Um, some of which I bought and some of which I actually made. So um, lake pigments is going to have to be a whole other video at some other point in time if people are interested. Um, like this is just chalk. Like, it's what this is called in the time period, it's lime white, but it's just chalk. We're using pink white, we're going to add it to the yellow, that sort of thing. This is one that I bought um, from earthpigments.com. Some of them, though, like cochineal, I actually, cochineal is just a type of bug, and I took the ground, I took dried bugs, made a lake pigment with it, and I got this. So it's supposed to be red. I don't know what I did wrong, it's purple. Um, so I still haven't quite found a great red yet, but I have some that are pretty close. So, yeah, different things. I also had um, acid dyes from Dharma and some, and some fiber dyes as well. Um, I had the actual dyes, and I also made lake, lake pigments from them, um, which I found out is a thing that you can do. So we're going to try them both today. I haven't, tr I've tried, of course, the actual dye bits um, before. I have not tried the lake pigments um, making colors, so... We're going to do a little bit of experimenting today. I only have space for 12 colors in my box. Um, and so I have 12 more that I can experiment with today. And maybe I'll change out some of these for something that ends up being better. We shall see. 
But first off, we're going to make our watercolor base. I've been using this plastic little container. We're going to start with um, a recipe, which is just a cup of water, and we're going to dissolve half a cup of gum arabic into it. And it usually takes us a while to uh, dissolve, but you want to make sure it's all dissolved. Make it all gummy. We're also going to put about a fifth a cup honey in there. Actually, fifth plus a little bit more. All right, here is our watercolor water. I'm going to add a little bit of glycerin, which isn't necessary. However, if you look at my ones that I did before, um, you see the cracking on these top ones. That's because I didn't add the glycerin, but what you see down here, when I added the glycerin, they're crack the cracking stopped. So it's purely for, you know, aesthetic reasons. I'm going to start with chalk, and my recipe that I came up with is about three teaspoons. And notice I don't like, they're not for real teaspoons because I didn't actually, they like spoonfuls. Let's put it that way, spoonfuls. And then two spoons of this. And we're going to get this consistency. Make sure all that chalk is mixed up. And make sure it's pretty smooth, so I'm just going to push it against the sides of the container. And then we're just going to pour this in. And then we can do another color and try another green. We're going to do the Terra Verde this time. Because I have not feeling that most of what I'm going to be doing as far as watercolors is going to be a lot of uh, florals and that sort of thing. So greens are going to be in high demand. Just red mica. Let's see how red we can get. That's a lot of red mica. Okay, that is not what I meant to happen. And now you'll see where my hands were all stained the last couple weeks. Especially when we get to indigo. Indigo, like just my hands were blue for over a week. But yeah, if you care about your like countertops and stuff, you might want to put something down <laughs> if you do this at home. I need to do more experiments with turning this stuff into like pigments um, because I'm wondering if I, because I didn't add vinegar or salt or anything, if it was an acid dye, if I, maybe if I added vinegar, I'd get a brighter color. I'm just curious since this was their Wedgwood blue. So I'm putting it in the oven for about 250 and basically just leaving it until it pulls away at the sides, which can be a couple hours for some of them and it can be you know, a couple days for others. All right, so here is the box and essentially I put whatever we need in there. It's already in there. So this is what the inside looks like now that my dad has helped. Now that my dad has helped me put together, we did raise these a little bit. So of course our, all of our little charcoal bits and then and the erasers and the pen nibs and pencil, that sort of thing. All right, paint is done. And so, um, I put it on way too high, and <laughs> so they really dried out, which is okay, I think, but I kind of throw them a little stickier and let them air dry the rest of the way, so some of these look like rocks, but it's okay. So we're going to start with the white. So we're going to see what we can fit in here, and then whatever else I need to cut down a little bit more, I can cut down a little more. Then our greens. Sorry, put the white in here. practice to make a quick little squiggle with each one of these colors so you can kind of see what each color looks like. I'm going to take one of these filled up with water. So I think that turned out rather, rather well. I'm excited to start working with this now and learn a little bit about painting. These I'm going to fill up with different types of ink. But yeah, that was a fun little project and I learned a whole lot about making lake pigments and all sorts of things. If you're making paints at home, I would highly suggest an oven around 150 to 200, not 250, because it made my paint like rocks. Um, and they don't look as nice as the ones that were done for a longer period of time on a lower temperature. So can't wait to get to use it. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Hi everyone.
everyone. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to see more projects with me making Victorian style projects that aren't necessarily clothing but still you know sewing related projects, I have created a playlist and you can view those videos here. Otherwise, have a fantastic week and I will see you here on Monday.